It is time to cancel JayStation. Enough is enough. Guess what, dummies? The regulators have come home to roost. Why do you gotta take shots? You gotta take pot shots at Lele Pons, one of the easiest fucking creators to goof on in the community. Anybody could have done a better job. Call you out again, bro. Let's get in the ring and fight. You can come down here to Toronto and I'll beat your in front of thousands of people, bro. And what do we know his name at all? It's Chris Hansen. I was banging a 20 year old girl when I was 16 and I'm absolutely sure somebody looks like they're perpetually 12. It's probably very frustrating. Please report at Nicholas D'Orio releasing private DMs and encouraging doxing of a 19 year old girl. I think he's a nuts. I'll be perfectly honest with you. And I mean it. I think he's a nuts. I think he's a, he's a nuts in training. You think he's learning? You think he's learning, Willie Mac? Mac truck wouldn't change my decision if it ran you fucking down. Your family's in peace, your father's shit, your mother's shit, and your shit. This is why people don't speak up. This is why people don't try. This is why it took me two weeks to figure out the right way to handle this situation. Because no matter what, people will poke holes and people will find a reason to hate you. I love my girlfriend, and I'm totally fine with dudes jacking off to pictures of her on the internet. You are a weak, weak man. A beta male. You are a fucking soy boy, a <laughs> cuck, and every other 4chan word for this. What's the new one? Simp. You are a fucking simp. God damn, bitch. Look at all this. Damn. 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 Only fans, bitch. Catch my bitch. I'm only fucking fans. Drop your pants, bitch. Scoop your dick inside your fucking hands. Quick. I cucks gives not a shit. You nut over his stupid bitch. On the 31st of March, this image was posted to the Call Me Carson subreddit, spawning theories that fellow creator Kato Reno, who was publicly seen as being in a relationship with Carson, had cheated on him. One user stated Carson had removed and unfollowed fits from his social media accounts, with another suggesting that this might be linked. Carson confirmed this to be true with the now iconic line, ding ding ding, we have a winner. Over the next few weeks, Kato Reno was accused of dating streamers I Will Dominate, Swordaway, Aerob, Fedmeister, even her own manager. This would bring the supposed account to seven, however not all of them were confirmed by Kate Arito herself. On the 11th of April, Mimulus, I'm Alex, Will N.E. and James Marriott announced the creation of the E-Boys YouTube channel, which had originally been iNabba's idea, with him claiming to have even come up with the same name. Many saw this as another example of I'm Alex snaking a fellow creator by getting iNabba kicked from the group. However, months later, Alex repeatedly suggested the reason he was never added to the group was because he missed a recording session. On the 14th of April, a streamer going by Invader V made these comments during a Twitch stream. Here's the deal. It doesn't really matter how much money you make or how much money you have. That's really the thing. Because I'm not asking you for a large financial contribution. If it cost $20 to sub, $20 is quite a bit of money. $20 is you can get a full meal for $20. And the difference of $20 and eating a meal is in that $20. Like, that's where it is. But a sub is $5. At maximum, in whatever your currency is, it's maybe $10. And it doesn't matter how broke you are, if you have time to watch Twitch, you have, you have $10, truly. If you don't have $10, you probably don't have time to watch Twitch because you should be working, you should be trying to earn money. Uh, it's not a ton, it's not like a ton of money. So being like, I'm broke, I can't afford to sub, it, that doesn't really track. What you mean to say is, I'm so irresponsible with my money, I can't support the entertainment that I enjoy. <laughs> this received widespread backlash and criticism for ignorance, particularly during the current economic situation, as well as a perceived entitlement from many social media figures. On the 24th of April, controversial streamer Alinity had an accidental wardrobe malfunction whilst live, which was in violation of Twitch's then newly released nudity and attire policy, which specifically stated, we ask that you cover your nipples. Keemstar tweeted this video out, getting 56,000 likes, yet over 12 hours later, she was still not banned off the site. 
At this point, Alunity felt it was fair to give herself a three-day suspension. And it wasn't until 24 hours after Keemstar's original tweet that Alunity received just a one-day ban. This, once again, sparked the conversation about Twitch's inconsistently enforced policies, specifically between men and women on the platform. On the 1st of May, Kavos exposed the owner of a fake Club Penguin, known as Club Penguin Online, reporting allegations he allegedly garnered nudes of underage girls, in exchange for positions of power in the parody game. This spurred further videos to be made by many creators, including some ordinary gamers whose video on the 13th got over 2 million views. Two days later, the story went mainstream, with BBC News, The Verge, The Evening Standard and Variety all reporting on the story with BBC News reporting. But now Disney has had the site shut down after a BBC investigation found that the game was not as innocent as it appeared. On the 2nd of May, I'm Alex published a video about Perez Hilton, which was a defense of Charlie D'Amelio following comments by Hilton that criticized their parents for allowing their child to dance to a song containing the lyrics, can't take big dick but I suck on it, ain't fucking with a pussy got a bump on it, bad bit put that pussy on me, whip out my dick then I hop on it. In the video, he insinuates multiple times that Perez is some sort of predator, leading to some backlash from the commentary community, stacking yet another serious allegation onto Alex's ever-growing list. And yes, I'm obsessed over a 15-year-old girl. <laughs> is that upsetting you? Is that weird you out? There, there are some people that should be afraid of me, um, and that they are. I, I Shut the fuck up, man! Shut the fuck up, man! Shut the fuck up! You're trying to ruin lives out here! We gotta get to 500 subs. It's the only way I'm committing to a stream schedule. And go Konaru said no. Calls a girl a thought for 20 minutes? Really wanna put my logo on that one! On the 9th of May, Scarce published a news video including a story about Grosscore scamming 5 editors over the last few years, which inevitably caused a scathing response from Grosscore. To many people's surprise, however, Scarce did not roll over and actually stood its ground, justifying its use of the word scam. But the reason why I put your name and your face in the title and thumbnail is because you are not trustworthy, okay? Five different editors and designers have come out and said that you did not pay them the full amount. On the 14th of May, Twitch announced the new Twitch Safety Advisory Council, which included one very interesting character in particular. In my spare time, I go out to my yard and I and I prance around and I and I eat grass and I, and I just munch it because it helps me feel like in tune with my dear self. On the 20th of June, John Swan uploaded a video exposing former TV personality Chris Hansen who had recently started a YouTube channel investigating, in particular, the Onision story. In this video, and another published on the 27th of July, John shows how Hansen falsely copyright struck critical videos of him, worked with an incompetent producer, led the anti-O's into believing Onision had committed a crime and would go to jail, worked with a shady lawyer, scammed his Kickstarter supporters, and much, much more. Over the following weeks and months, Hansen's close associate Jean would dox John's full name, publish images of his 14-year-old sister and her school. And coincidentally, some of Hansen's most vocal detractors, John Swan, Pescator and Tipster, would have their Twitter accounts suspended on the exact same day. Okay, Google, play skyjackson.mp4. What the hell is this? No, wait, this isn't right. Okay, Google, play, play skyjackson.mp4. Google! Go go! There's this person named Sky Jackson, and she was the little girl on that Disney show, Jessie. Who has decided to swing her Twitter audience, which is now in excess of 500,000 people, at racists as she exposes people for past actions, tweets, direct messages, and other social media posts. People will see somebody that they know say something racist, and they'll throw out like their name and their account and what school they go to, and she'll either amplify it to these hundreds of thousands of people, or or she'll even find more information. This account has like half a million followers, right? Now, if you if you tell people racially, oh, this person's a racist, oh, this person's an abusive person, 
Now, obviously, her goal was to get these racist students kicked out of these colleges to make sure that they don't get jobs so that they don't cause trouble in society later on. And you give out their personal, private, or phone information, you know what tends to happen? Not just harassment, but then there's very real risks of swatting, of people actually going to this person's house. Sometimes these people will send uh, fake snaps over to people and pretend like these people are racist even though they just edited the picture. And you know, Sky Jackson doesn't really take that into account, she just believes everything that's being sent to her. You're still giving out like fucking phone numbers and shit. You don't have to give them like someone's address for the harassment to not happen. Just giving somebody their cell phone number is enough for the harassment. It is one word. One word. One second long clipped out of context. Is it song lyrics? Is it malicious? What is the real scenario here? You're giving them enough information for them for their school to cancel them. You're still ruining someone's life. On the 23rd of June, two sets of allegations were made against Minnie Lad, a popular gaming YouTuber. One stated while she was aged 17, Minnie Lad asked them to come over to his house and have sex, as well as successfully solicited nudes from them. The other allegation from someone 16 at the time states he sent them an unsolicited picture of his bulge. Both allegations state that he tried to silence them, with one alluding to him potentially committing suicide and another one accusing him of using his mods to stop them from coming forward. In a Twitter response two days later, Minilad apologizes to those he hurt, says he will be seeking help, but strangely, never admits to doing any of the things he was accused of. On the 28th of June, Yvonne, a member of the streamer group Offline TV, released a tweet longer about a fellow creator at Offline TV called Fedmeister. This boiled down to sexual misconduct and led to the removal of Fedmeister from Offline TV. Pokimane went live on stream to build on the idea that Fed was manipulative, alleging he pitted her friends against her tried to get Yvonne kicked out of offline TV, and lied about himself and him being in a relationship. Fed released a slew of tweets apologizing for making people feel uncomfortable, but maintained he was not a predator, just that he was flawed. On the 30th of June, a massive argument sprawled across Twitter, where XQC exposed streamers for getting paid to do charity events. The streamers that you watch, that they, think, they, do, they, do, they, do, they do fucking charity days, and they're pretty much all paid for it. He called Jessica Belvin's sweetie. Jessica then called him sexist. Alindy gets destroyed in gross score. Well, he's gross score. Get him! Get him! Get him! Get XQC! Get him, mate! Drag her, bruv! Go! Get him, mate! XQC the best, bruv! I'm in park. Get XQC! Get that gun, bruv! Hey, oi, 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 oi! Let me rope in on this! Ninja, I think you're a massive dickhead, but you know what? That comment you made, bruv, I'll tell you what! I like this side of Ninja! And then they cash out with, like, a six-figure check because they have a, a sea of simps. And then they turn around and shit on streamers who literally fucking go live for six to eight hours every day. My case is my landmark president setting Supreme Court cases that only two has ever happened in this entire world. I could buy his mom's house, burn it down, build it again, burn it down again, and then build it again. On the 26th of June, Dr. Disrespect was permanently banned on Twitch, despite Slash reporting two months earlier that Doc had re-signed to Twitch in an exclusive multi-year deal. In an interview on the 16th of July, he maintained he had no idea for the reason why he was banned, and he returned to streaming on August the 7th, reaching slightly over 500,000 concurrent viewers. The day after Doc's ban, Slash made the now infamous tweet where he claimed to know the reason for the ban, but refrained from publicizing it despite him having leaked so many pieces of information in the past. To this day, it has not been publicized as to why he was banned, and he continues to stream on YouTube. On the 19th of August, Bella Thorne launched her OnlyFans, getting $1 million on her first day and $2 million within the first week. Slightly after this, a screenshot showed Bella offering a naked picture to a user for $200, despite her previously tweeting, I am not doing nudity. Days later, the platform announced it would be limiting the maximum pay-per-view and tips amounts to $50 and $100, respectively, in an effort to help prevent overspending. Twitter put two and two together and made five, with many people claiming these changes were a direct result of Bella's alleged scam, with one stating, Bella 
caused $600,000 in chargebacks. The idea was that Bella had sent this out to all of her followers on OnlyFans and that thousands of people had charged back, causing OnlyFans to react by reducing the maximum payments that could be received from any single user. The only piece of evidence to support this theory or the accusation that she scammed her fans in the first place was this one screenshot that was not once able to be verified or replicated by anyone else. On the 1st of September, Joe Rogan released his first episode on Spotify following his announcement in May that he would be switching platforms. Many leaks and rumors from inside the company suggested that the employees at Spotify wanted editorial supervision over podcasts, causing uproar from many fans concerned about Rogan's ability to speak freely, something which he embraces often with controversial opinions, speakers, and topics. And at the end of October, Alex Jones was a guest on the show. On the 17th of September, Ethan Klein of H3H3 called out James Charles for selling merch that used the exact same design and identical colors, whilst acknowledging he and Gila didn't invent color blocking. James claimed to have never seen his brand, and he said he had shown Ethan the original photo that inspired his collection. Ethan then leaked his DMs with James that showed him admitting someone on his team may have copied his design, seeding the point that one design is an exact copy. To meme the ensuing drama, Keemstar, Leafy, Ricky Berwick, and Bo Blacks all dropped color block merch, three of which had been in drama with Ethan Klein over 2020. Uh, long story short, several months ago, this guy decided that it was his decision to start stalking me and harassing me, um, threatening me mentally, physically, threatening to come to my home, threatening to harm me when he did. Fucking pussy, what's the deal? Where's the gun at, you fat faggot? On the 27th of September, Boogie2988 threatened to kill Frank Hassel. I pulled a gun on him. I told him to leave my property. I told him that I felt threatened. Um, I fired a warning shot so that he would leave. After firing the warning shot, he did. On the 27th of October, a video of Zoe Laverne, 19, and Connor Joyce, 13, kissing surfaced on an Instagram story. Zoe Laverne proceeded to go live on her Instagram to address said kissing and allegations of her grooming Connor on the 1st of November. She stated that she and Connor had both consented to kissing. After this and other statements made, Connor made his own statement saying that Zoe had never raped him or did anything without consent. Zoe's mother also jumped in to defend Zoe on her own Instagram Live. When these defenses weren't accepted by the public, Zoe Laverne lashed out on her Instagram story stating, Y'all wanted an apology from me, and then when I do, you're still upset. I get it, I do, but make up your mind, please. You wanted the minor side, and then when he addresses the truth, you say, Not the child talking, y'all don't make sense. Both families are aware of what happened between Zoe and the teen, which led to the separation of the two months prior to the video being leaked. On the 23rd of November, YouTube terminated Belle Delphine's YouTube channel, citing violations of YouTube's policy on nudity or sexual content. However, Belle argued that she didn't receive any strikes. A video from the Right Honourable Lord Vega would get 2.4 million views on Twitter, showing the direct comparison between Belle's infringing content and Cardi B and 6 ix music videos. She would get her channel back the next day, with Team YouTube apologising for a mistake by the review team. On the 28th of December, Minilad released a video directly responding to two allegations made against him in June, where he admits to using his attempted suicide to try and silence the girls, apologises to them directly as well as privately, and says that he's been in therapy for the last few months. When the 
debate is lost, the loser resorts to slander. This is the beginning of the end, guys. Comedy is dead. Criticism is dead. Satire is dead. It's all gone. But we wouldn't have found the lies and hypocrisies in many of these stories if commentators didn't get involved. The slippery slope is so obvious on YouTube, and I feel personally insulted when creators pretend like it doesn't exist. It bothers me. It really does, because this is a site that brags about its diversity and being brave. Have you ever sent an unsolicited dick pic to Mango? Okay. That's Mango. Nick, kick Nick out. Wait! Turn up the because you framed me in game two. You said you saw me go to the vent. I am not stop speaking! A fucking Mac truck wouldn't change my decision if it ran you fucking down. Oh, I'm really trashed, dude. I could buy his mom's house, burn it down. Build it again, burn it down again, and then build it again! <laughs>